Hello there, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in a different type of mod. The mod is called Dreams of Poland, in which we're going to be playing as a Polish Republic. We're going to leave historical AF focuses on just because I've never played this mod before, and it was recommended to me several times from different campaigns and different comments, and maybe even on my Discord a little bit, but custom game rules, everything set to default. But let's begin. In addition to the Dreams of Poland mod, we're using colored events. State transfer tool mod as well as player led peace conferences. Cool. Alright, so what do we start with? We start with uh, 58 divisions, not bad. We have three research slots, pretty normal. Basic machine tools, not bad, not bad. Let's see. Construction one, just your normal Hoi 4 stuff. Oh, we actually have radar already, nice. Mechanical computing is very good. Let's see, what can we build up? We don't have that many factories, 70 in the center. Surrounded by stuff in 60. I'm putting kills first. And do that right there next. Let's see. Focus. So we have the Polish economy. Ah, oh, 30 35 day focuses. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. Whoever the developers are, thank you. Yes, 35 day focuses are the best. Or actually, just less than 70s. Pretty good. Both to the state of the Polish government. It's been less than a year since Joseph Piduski, the hero of Poland and the de facto dictator of the nation, has passed away, but the effects of his absence can already be felt. The BBWR, the political party of the Sanation movement, has begun fracturing into separate camps, with each a different leader vying for absolute control. The Polish people are about to enter a very politically tumultuous period in their history. Very... Well, I guess that's not good, but, you know, it is what it is. Go low, go high. <clears throat> not a bad division. Pretty nice. And the cop? Hmm, I think I prefer these. Let's go with... 10. Why not 10? And then we'll throw on one of these divisions like we can't train anymore. So be it. What do we have? Guns, our support equipment, artillery, light tanks, not bad. Interwar fighters, not bad. Armored cars. Ooh, we could probably wait to make those. Get some motorized because we definitely need those. Anti-air. You know what? We'll throw on some anti-air there too. We already have tanks. So that's... Ooh, what's the difference? 5, 36, 80. 5, 36, 80. 16, 6, 12... This is slightly slower. 1536. This is more piercing. What is wrong with you? Oh, look at that. 0341. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, cool. So we have you. We're making those already. Go and convert. What do we have? We have some planes. We could use some cast. I don't think in industrially we will be able to get up there, but that's okay. Not yet, at least. And we've got some. Sh one dockyard. A single dockyard. Well, looks like subs are on the menu. Cool. And just in case, we'll make one thing of convoys because you never know if you really need them. Before that time go on, do we have a navy? Yes, we do. Two fleets. I ay, ay, Get separate you off. Be fine. You shall be led by. Not this guy, but Jersey Sursky. Cool. Go ahead and train. We don't have that much fuel, I bet, but whatever. And you should be led by. Not this guy, but this guy, Joseph. Career officer, yes. It looks like he really, really should be the sea wolf type of dude. Cool. Thank you. And train. Well, actually, do we have an air force? Do we have an air force at all? Yes, we do. Ooh, what is this? Fighters, cluster smoke. So, I don't... Oh, we got fighters. Oh, I thought we had tactical bombers. I guess not. Cool. 108, huh? There you go. Just so everyone have them trained. There you go. Good enough. Now let time go on. So we get to some of the focuses. We can divide up our armies a little bit. We have 11 cavalry divisions. 8 combat width with some recon. Okay. And then we have you guys. At this point, I like the cops and all. But we're going to need some of that. There you go. Streamline it a little bit more. And actually, there you go. You know what? I'm going to convert. Let's see you guys. There you go. Good luck with that. Convert things around a little bit more. Cool. Boom. We got six. We got six. Boom, boom, boom. As we just let time go on as we can do our focuses. Nine. Obviously, this is not the most optimal way of dividing things up, but it doesn't really matter. There you go. So you... Oh, a state of the... Polish government. Following the chaotic upheaval of the Shem, the Polish parliament in the 1920s, the hero of Poland, Marshal Joseph 
Pilsudski led a successful coup against a dem democratically elected government of Prime Minister Winsity Vitlos. Or Whitlos. He re replaces Whitlos's government with his, one of his own choosing, which he called the Sanation Healing Government, a cabinet of Pils Pilsudski's closest allies. Despite refusing to take the position of president, the marshal nonetheless had near uncontested control over the Polish government, directing the nation from behind the scenes. Although the Sanation government did not did much in providing stability, the element that held it together was Pilsudski himself, and he could not live forever. Following his death in 35, the San Nation government began fracturing and ended up splitting into three sub factions. The San Nation left under Walery Slawik, who was the former prime minister, the San Nation right under Edward Ridsmigli, a high ranking military officer, and finally the castle, the centrist faction, under the longtime president Ignacy Mosiki Muchiki. While the San Nation government is nominally in control, if its divisions continue to deepen, it is possible that another faction may usurp the control. We must uphold Marshal. Pilsudski's legacy. Cool. And yeah, we definitely want to uphold his legacy. That would probably be pretty good. One, two, grab two more. There you go. No, it's a one, two, please, thank you. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, just throw one for now. There you go. Good enough. I mean, you'll be on your own faction. Oh, wait, I have a spy. Cool. Ooh. A smoocher? Yes, smoocher. So now we can do approve the COP plan. Completing this focus will unlock a decision that, when activated, will have the following effect. Every month for the next four years, we have either a military factory, civilian factory, or an infrastructure built for free in one of the following four states. Whoa, that is awesome. We expand the Dojka? Another operative slot? Oh, even more. Free upgrade? That's kind of cool, actually. Upgrade efficiency time or upgrade time minus 50%. That's pretty good. Wow. Passive defense. So we gotta choose stuff. We're Salsa College, more command, power gain daily, army experience army experience gain, aviation gain daily. Ooh, do we want to do that? Do we want to end Sanation? Sanation government is controlled. The colonel's regime. The future of Sanation movement. So we want to go down here. The colonel's regime, then we can. We can do the Intermarium, create the Metamores, or we can just go fascist. And we send nation left, the castle, of course, the nation right, castle and send nation right coalition, as well as send nation left. Ooh. Or, we'd say, we want a kingdom back, in which we get the monarchist faction has been has removed the send nation government. I kind of want to go to the kingdom, because you can do an absolute monarchy, or a constitutional monarchy, or, really interestingly, you can get a French king on the throne, a colonial empire, oh my goodness, a German king, an Austrian king, a Polish king would probably be the best, because we are Polish. But if you read about the other stuff, uh, which we'll look at just in a little bit, you'll see that it might be good to take out or get a Austrian king or a German king. We can core Belarusian and Ukrainian states. Whoa, mass motorization. So, for example, with the Austrian king, you can get a core on all of what was Austro Austria Hungary. Which is insane. Absolutely nuts. Oh my goodness. If we annex or puppet Spain in a decision to put the king's brother, Leo Karl von Habsburg, on the Spanish throne, or you become a German king, launch the invasion of Germany, you get a basically you get a core on all German states. Even if you do what United Empire. You can do Anschluss of Austria, Anschluss of Czechoslovakia, and the ultimate European superpower. Cores all Austrian and Czechoslovakian states as well as Alsace Lorraine. Or a French king return to the emperor, the third French empire, king corps on all French corps states, all French generals and admirals will join us. You can do a Russian king, loyal to the Tsar, or you can continue to go down with the communist path. So that'd be kind of interesting as well. German diplomacy, reclaim the Baltics, integrate the Baltics, get more corps on stuff, integrate Finland, rally the Russian people, Congress Poland. And then, of all things, you can have a Japanese king as well. Uh, you can get an alliance with the Japanese, or the British, I guess, suppose, as well. Adopt Prometheanism. Cool. Fragment Russia into smaller states to get a core on basically Japan. You can go to war basically with the Allies or the UK. Conquer into China. Cultural hybridization. So this is kind of nuts. I definitely want to go monarchist, so it looks like we'll probably have to go down there. But I want to improve the COP plan first. Since 1928, a plan to greatly industrialize a safe and secure portion of our country has been molded over by the Polish government, finally after launching in, or languishing in bureaucratic hell for years. 
COP or COP plan or in Central Industrial Region plan has been approved and the expansion can be underway. This project will be incredibly expensive but has the potential to make us one of the largest economies in Europe. Nice. Let's see. Oh, we can polonize Königsberg? Oh my goodness. For 240 days, you can eventually get a court and be named to Krolvik. I'm, I'm not Polish. I have no idea how to pronounce some of this stuff. So, so this is a bunch of German states and a little bit of Lithuanian states, it looks like. And anything else? Yeah, yeah, pretty much just German and Polish, German and Lithuanian stuff. We're losing some fuel because we're training stuff. We can only get 0.69 political power a day because let's talk about our spirits. We have fractured sanation government, which is not good. We get more daily democracy and unaligned support, but only if you really wanted that stuff. Contacts with minorities, which hurts your political power, stability, and more fascism support, actually. You get Polish militarism, which is not bad. Polish general staff, which is pretty good. And then we have insufficient military, which is not very good for tanks or, or planes, which is not very good. And then we're recovering from the Great Depression, which will be gone, well, by December 31st. How worrying. Cool. And let's continue agrarianism policies, because we have more political power. Approximately 70% of our population work in agriculture. So when the Great Depression hit our nation, it hit our farmers hardest. We have pursued agrarianism policies for years now, such as land redistribution and government-funded upgrades for farming equipment. We should continue these policies with gusto to keep as much support for the Sand Nation government as possible. Cool. Anything else here new? Oh yeah, year one. Here we go. Turkey re-militarizes the Turkish Straits. Let's begin the cop plan, which will last for the next four years. Ooh, for next year we lose resource efficiency gain and political power. You know what? That's okay. And we get a another factory in 30 days in Kiels. Kiels. Kielsi. Kiels. That is kind of wild. And we only get 0.54 political power, which is fine. I think, you know what, for a year, if you lose 0.15 political power for a free factory of, any, of some sort uh, or infrastructure, hey, Great. Love it. I'll definitely take that. That sounds awesome. We only have nine factories. I do want to get enough naval XP. We don't have to get that much. We currently get... Oh, we actually have two fuel. We actually have two fuel. I didn't know that. Alright. Let's see. You guys are training until you're done. You're almost there, which is great. You guys are almost there. Oh, level... Hmm. These designs... Uh, not, not bad for level one. That's not bad. That's really not bad, actually. For the navy, though, the sub twos... What do we got here? Well... It could be better. It could be a lot worse. At least they have all the slots taken up, so. Reaffirm friendship with Romania. Since we already gained independence, we have excellent relations with the Romanians, even signing a mutual defense pact in case either of us were ever to be invaded by the Soviet Union. We share many of the same goals and we have similar political beliefs, making us natural allies. Let's show the world that our friendship is still as strong as today as it has been for years. We are buddy buddy with the Romanians. Let's see, and actually, yeah, keep doing that stuff, that's so good. Do we get any more political power? Ooh, ultra nationalists. Silent workers, that's exactly exactly what I want to do. Ooh, you get more population. Trade. Ooh. More construction speed, less consumer goods. I like that famous journalist. Point five. You get more stability. Ooh. War industrialist, fortification engineer, talented engineer. Wow, we get so many people here. Technocrat too? Ooh. Radio engineer. Now that's different. That's definitely different. More reinforcement, better sub detection, and radar station construction speed. Not bad. I'm gonna go with the silent workers. Because we got minus 0.15, minus 0.15, minus 1.15 political power every day. So, plus 15%, I think will help us out because we can get stuff faster. And I'll be using them the entire time. Since so many things cost political power, so. If you get it earlier on, obviously you can choose to do other stuff, but. That's just the way I like to play. Basic machine tools, don't mind if we do. And disperse industry. You know what? I always do disperse industry. Let's go with concentrate it. It's not, it's not nearly as good, but just to make it, mix it up a little bit. Second London Naval Treaty sign. Very cool. Oh, I should put some generals on our guys. Ah, uh, yeah. You're probably pl politically connected, but whatever. Ooh, ooh. Oh, these are logistic wizards, though. That's kind of nice. I like that. Let's see. Ooh. Artillery leader. More defense. Ooh, okay, sure. Why not? I like that. Infantry. He's an infantry leader. Yes. I love infantry. So is he. Cool. Now, we'll probably got to end the Sanation government. The military overthrows the government, huh? Yeah, we got, we got to go down that way. So, unfortunately, we got to lose political power, but whatever. Or stability and war support, I should really say. Pilsudski was a tyrant, and the BBWR is a little more than a coalition of sad old men from a bygone era. Poland needs new leadership to write our nation's course. If something is not done to remove the Sanation government soon, their foreign policy decisions will surely lead to the downfall of our nations within a handful of years. Woo! That is... That is a lot of minus stuff. That's a lot of penalties to our health. And health, by health I mean country. Oh, good. Artillery defense. Oh, that looks so good. Ooh, a cavalry expert, too. 
Uh, let's get... We got some Mountaineers here. Let's go throw this guy on. And then we shall throw on... Oh, look at that. He's got a nice little hat. i got to choose you. Oh, you're really good with Mountaineers. Maybe not you then. Let's see. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll go Stanislaw. Stanislaw? Stanislaw. Kopanski. Kopanski? Ooh. Construction 1. Don't mind if we do. It is 36. That's not bad. That stuff is looking pretty good. We already could do that. Let's get some planes. Planes are pretty important, right? And we have cavalry as well as tanks here. Ooh. Ooh, we have a tank general. Armor speed. I like this guy because he's already a cavalry leader. Roman Abraham. I think I've heard of him before, actually. I'm pretty sure I have. Details. So he's already gone that way. We can still get Panzer Leader if we still choose him. This guy already is a Panzer Leader, though. 3131. 3232. Ah, I'm just going to choose this guy. Why not? Prepare the coup. The BBWR's control over the government and national elections means nothing short of a coup will be enough to remove from them, for them for power. It is ironic but fitting that the Senate Asian government's regime should also fall to a coup. But our coming government will be different. It will just have the full support of the people and not just a few old, crusty colonels from the Great War. Let's see what happens. As long as I get my factories, that's all that matters to me. And we're probably going to lose a couple generals here. Ooh, tank wise. Pretty good on defense. He's really good on defense, actually. Let's guys offensive, unyielding defender at the same time. Okay. Recovery rate. Anything else? Nope. Anything for them? Nope. Anything here? Organizer. Not bad. Infantry expert. Just go and do that one. That'd be fine. And infantry expert. Uh, we might want to go with ambusher, actually. Or just. You know, let's, let's go with scavenger. And we'll do. Let's go more scavenger. Why not? I normally don't use scavenger, so let's try that one. Let's see. 36 still. We need to get this, some of this. More defense and breakthrough. It's my boy, no. And we're done. Oh, there goes Spain, actually. Do we, we don't really care to help out really any either side. We're not allowed to send volunteers, of course, but... I'd like to send these planes. Who the... Jose? Oh, okay. Military Junta. That makes more sense now. It is on historical, so... <laughs> and Wick. Or Work in Progress. Only choose a monarchist option. Completed. Joseph Holly, the Blue General, Liberal Military Officers, Falangus Military Officers. Only choose a monarchist option. Well, okay. So we remove the fractured Sanation government. So, let's see. We remove this. That's good. We become the King of Poland. And we get Stanislaw Makiewicz. Makiewicz. Cool. Oh, we still get more dem democracy and daily uh, unaligned support, so. Wow, you have. You got quite the hair. Cool. And I'll get coming down here. The Kingdom of Poland. Not since 1795 has Poland been an independent kingdom. Since then, we've been the subjects of the Germans, Austrians, and Russians, all who did their best to suppress our culture and enslave our people. After gaining or regaining our independence, our government opted for a republican form of government. This ultimately ended in disaster after Marshal Pilsudski died and the Sanation government dissolved into bickering cliques. Well, thanks to Stanislaw Makiewicz and other monarchists, we are back on track to become one of the greatest nations. In Europe. We, oh my goodness, that's so little political power. After this, elusive gentleman. I, I'm glad that we can still get all these guys. That's kind of fun. Hmm, population's nice. Minister of Trade, that looks not bad actually at all. Point one, that's not really worth it though right now. Actually, it could be pretty beneficial. Let's go partial mobilization though. And then we'll choose military theorists probably. Nice, 13 out of 15, not bad. 30 August, 36. And we get one infrastructure in Krakow. Nice. Games of the Olympic Olympiad. Good, good, good. Keep building, building, building. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a pretty tough tough fight between us and everyone else in the world. I don't think I can go to war with Lithuania, can I? No, I cannot. Oh, that sucks. The Kingdom of Poland, though. And no, rally noble support. We're not aligned. Write a new constitution. We will decide the form of a monarchy will take, whether it be an elected monarchy or a hereditary monarchy, and if the monarchy should rule with absolute or power being kept up with the constitution. Also, candidates will, can we can choose from will become our king and unlocked in the decisions tab. Democracy. Well, I'll probably go with democracy first so we can suppress that amount of support, and then we'll do noble rally. So, rally public support. The lessons of the past teach us that monarchs who rule without the support of the people are destined for the guillotine. Promising liberals and socialists that the future monarch will be respected of people is only the, the starting part. We must convince the people that their monarch will be deserving of their love and affection. With the people on their side, our monarch will be secure in the power and get more stability, which is always a good thing. See, this is how Paradox should have done like the Battle for the Bosphorus DLC. 30 day, 35 day focuses. 
That's where it's at. That's really where it's at. Cool. Let's go and train some of these guys because they need it, definitely. Yeah. We're going to need a lot of divisions where we're headed. We're going to need a lot of guns. I just don't think we have the industry to support it, though. Oh, I have minus 11,000 guns. That's all. That's all. Support equipment. Yeah, we can use some of that, too. Anything else here? Not really. Not really. After that... Ooh, coordinate the monarch. Choose our future king. Potential candidates can be found in the decisions tabs. Cool. And we'll rally the noble support. And maybe we'll do some more stuff for uh, industry. The strength and security of the nobility is just as vital as that of our future monarchy. We will win over as many nobles to our cause as we can through bribes, laws that defend our privileges, or their privileges, and whatever promises we need to make. With their backing, we are halfway to gaining the support necessary to bring back the monarchy. We get 100 political power. Nice. So we get a lot more democracy support for now, which is actually going down. Because you kind of like the monarchy. You like democracy, but you got more support for the non aligned group. Concentrated. Cool. Ooh, what do we want? We probably are going to need field hospitals for now. Hey, now we get another military factory in Lublin. Lublin. Not Dublin. Lublin. Lublin. Huh. Cool. Let's go ahead and change this up. There we go. Obviously, the Navy is probably not going to be a super important thing for us, but you never know. You never know. Actually, how long does it take to get all these? Oh, we can't do this one yet. Recovering from the Great Depression. Okay, so that makes sense. Over here, yeah, another opera slot would be okay. We can still do this stuff, which I don't mind doing, and I do want to get more army XP gain daily. Let's see. We do this to Polish land forces, army land forces. Updated armor support, armor, support equipment, weapons, stuff like that. The plan, mobile warfare. Armor. If, I don't think I'll be able to go down this way, really, just because things caught. We don't have the industry for it. Superior firepower is usually the tried and true way to go. Oh, minus 10% artillery cost, anti air. Actually, that's probably the best way to go for us, just because I'm actually using anti air this time as well. But what else do we have before we say that? Mountaineers, Marines, Airborne. Ooh, land forward, construction stuff. Just be on the defense, mass assaults, industry. You get more population and better infantry equipment time, so that's not bad. Support companies. Land Doctrine, that's pretty good. This is only 35 days, so... For Poland, more population. New Polish General Staff. Military R&D, I like that one a lot. Polish Air Force, of course. And the Polish Navy, which we probably don't need to focus on right now. Let's keep going down this way first. Write a new constitution. Before any king or queen is chosen to lead our nation, we must write up a constitution to dictate the form of a monarchy. Will it be an absolute monarchy where the monarch holds complete authority, or a constitutional one where the monarchy only acts as a figurehead and unifier? Will we bring back the Polish form of elective monarchy or adopt a more traditional hereditary monarchy? These are important questions that must be answered before we proceed. Mm, not much else there. Ooh, do we have any unique companies? I mean, they have unique names. It looks pretty sort of generic, which is fine. I know this, this mod is still in the works, which is cool. Let's see, anything here? Ooh, who do we have for this? Ooh, armor, nice. Infantry, ooh. Cavalry, not bad, not bad. Artillery, ooh, yes, yes. 12% recovery rate, I like that. Entrenchment speed's always okay. Air superiority, pilot training. Screens, not bad. Let's grab the military theorist guy. That'll be good for the future. Almost one political power day, not bad. Not bad. Ooh, yeah, this guy just hurts our stability. World tension's going up a little bit more, which is kind of nice. Look at that. Already we got one army XP. I'm going to get a amount of anti-air, actually. If I remember correctly, how much... Let's see. You guys have... 12.9. If I threw on anti-air, you can already pierce light tanks. So good. So good. Alright, so 36 still. we got some Mountaineers. we got some of these guys. Let's grab some of this, some of this artillery stuff so we can get, get it done and get it out. So this way we can get to 39 stuff whenever we need to. We are using CAS, so we're already looking pretty good. I'm probably not going to be using carriers, maybe? Maybe not? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we're going to really focus on the Navy that much in this campaign. Let's grab some, some fuel storage. Some fuel silos. I think that would be a good thing to do right now. There you go. And then... There you go. And then... Bingo was his Nemo. If you need a train, go right ahead. And we're going to write a new constitution, my friends. The question of succession. From 1025 to 1795, Poland was an independent kingdom and was even one of the most strongest powers in Europe for a time. In the last 300 years of that time, Poland has also had a very unique, or has 
has a unique something for of monarchy, form of monarchy, where each king was elected by the nobility of Poland rather than the position being an inherited one. Now that we've decided to make our nation a kingdom again, we must decide how each successive king will be chosen. An elected monarchy, especially one where the common people are allowed to particip participate in the vote, will ensure that only the most popular candidate is chosen, but such a system could also lead to monarchs owing others for their help in getting elected. An inherited system of monarchy would greatly boost the legitimacy of the kingdom in the eyes of Europe, but there's no guarantee that each king will be popular amongst the people. Which form of monarchy will be working best for us? An elective monarchy? Or a hereditary? Well, I don't think I want to go democratic. Let's see, we coordinate the monarch. Do we want to go absolute monarchy or constitutional one? So, for the absolute monarchy, we get for the king, more population, glorification of the military, rule of the nobility. We are the king's subjects. The divine right, I like that. I like that idea. Uh, the role of the clergy, not bad, but not great for political power. We get a research slot, which is good. Fun Catholic scholarships, of course. Uh, bonus in land doctrine, air doctrine, royal navy stuff, royal armed forces, and traditional social roles, political power, and defense of the, the, the homeland, not bad, as well as fervent nationalism. Or we can go to the constitutional monarchy. Political power, political power stability, political power stability, old elections, reinforced minority uh, rights treaty, popular rule, religious minorities, encourage meritocracy, and of course you get another research slot. Invest in the economy, countryside, military, a vigorous economy, not bad, gender equality, industrial advancements, and this. I think we're going to go for this one, the power of the monarch, the standard hereditary monarch, uh, line. The power of the monarch, though, the, thing, the final thing that our constitution must address is how much power the monarch will have. After the Great War, very few absolute monarchies have survived to the present day, even the most authoritarian typically share some power with other of arms of the, of the government. However, since we're creating a new monarchy from scratch, there's no reason why we couldn't give the future king unfettered power, which would mean the government could run faster and more efficiently. On the other hand, simply starting with the constitutional monarchy may save us some t trouble in the future. Serving as a figurehead, the king would also be far more pe popular to the people, acting as an unbiased unifier that is above all uh, the, in the turmoil of daily politics. So, how much power should we ultimately give our monarchs? Lock is going down. Constitutional absolute... Uh, rule absolutely with no limitations placed upon them. That sounds like fun. Might cause some problems, but that's okay. Cool. It's November 19th. Well, let's see. Let's go to this one. The Warsaw War College. In 1919, with cooperation from the French military mission to Poland, the Warsaw War College was established to train officers in general staff duties, as well as high strategy. Many of our officers gained valuable experience in the Great War and the Polish-Soviet War, and it only made sense that they passed this valuable experience on to the next generation. Increasing the college's funding would allow for even more officers to be trained at a time, something that we desperately need for our growing army. I want to get even more army XP gain, or naval stuff, or even air stuff. That'd be very bueno. Oh, king of... Oh, we have to make a choice now. Janus Eins Jadwiga II? Pretty good for the Air Force. Oh, they're all absolute monarchs, so... Friedrich Christian von Wetten? Oh, my goodness. Imp German Imperial Connections. Karl Abrich Hapsburg Lotharingen? Oh my goodness. Vladimir Kirilovich? Ooh, da more daily compliance. That's not bad. I like that one. Louis Napoleon the Sixth. Or yeah. Yasuhito Prince Chichibu. Chichibu. You know what? Here's the thing. I'm gonna let you guys decide. And this campaign, because I it doesn't matter to me, because they look really all fun. So should we go with a Polish king? With Janus first or Jadwiga the second? The Austrian king with Karl Albrecht of Austria. A German king under Friedrich of Saxony. A French king, Napoleon VI. The Russian king of Vladimir of Russia. Or if you really want us to. Yasuhito. Yasuhito I. Which I don't really want to use. To be honest, I don't really want to go with, down this path. Because that's going to be ex pretty gosh darn difficult. Unifying Japan and <laughs> Poland of all places together. But if you want to... Just let me know which path we should take, and we will pretty much finish this episode doing other focuses until we get to the next episode, which will be fine with me. More than fine, because we have plenty, plenty of things, plenty of things to research. Oh, a civilian factory, yes. Le Vau, Le View, La La La, Tra La La. Good, we're almost done with that. How many more days we got this? Cool, so in the meantime, we can go down there. So this path is all blocked off, which is an anti common turn back. Germany proposes that we sign a pact to address the common turn's goal of spreading communism worldwide through the use of subversion and violence. By signing this pact, we agree to share intelligence on the communist threat and acting in close cooperation against this menace. Yeah, for now, that'd probably be a good thing to do. It's December. When does this thing expire? 
The 31st. Ooh, so we got like three days. 31st. You know what? We're going to save up. I'm going to do the Pulse Economy next. So we just have to wait for it to finish. So. so the Polish economy has been practically paralyzed by the Great Depression for years, grinding all mechanization and industrialization efforts to a halt. However, policy-wise, choices have eventually brought us to the other side of the grim era, and we can finally resume progress in regards to the economy. Beautiful. See? And we got eight days already ahead. Great. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that's already done almost. Wow, I can't believe it's already been one year already. Wow. Still get a good amount of political power, though. Not bad. Military staff, organization's not bad. Planning's okay. Morale, not bad. Offense, pretty good. D defense, pretty good. We're probably going to need a lot of defense, let's be real. Going to need a lot of defense. I think I'll just go with... The blue general's not bad. I do want to get the blue general eventually. Soviet agent, huh? That's pretty good, too. Fuel storage, happy 37, everyone. Let's grab some more output, because we need it immediately. That's nice, looking pretty good there. Anti-air is looking pretty darn decent as well. The Polish economy, my friends. Let's go at industrial expansion. I'm thinking, ooh, more ur slots of urban states? Rural states. Research slot. Ooh, I need a... Re oh, God, we got to get a research slot. I'm thinking we need that immediately. Whoa. Improve industrial efficiency. At least 15 military factories. Synthetic oil. Rubber. Ooh. Uh, natural resources. Oh, my goodness. I want civilian factories, but I want to get that research slot immediately, so industrial expansion. Our nation's greatest weakness, especially in comparison to our neighbors, is easily our weak industry. Our soldiers may be some sort of the finest in Europe, but this means nothing when we cannot properly arm them without modern weapons of war. However, no industrialization policies can be seriously pursued without proper research into modern industrial practices. But I believe that is where we're going to end today's episode. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we choose our king. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.